be just standard uh, administrative things that people have to do in life. Artists are more concerned with the creative element, so they're, they're not good at that. But nevertheless, he overcame those obstacles, and now he spends his time speaking publicly. He mentors on the topic of personal productivity and life management. Uh, he helps other artists kind of get their act together as well. Please give a round of um, applause for Joseph Brewster. What is it that terrifies you? Go ahead, yell out something to me that you're afraid of. Wow, that's a lot of things. Well, for five minutes, I want to invite you with me on a journey through fear. Its effects, its allure, and why sane, rational people spend money to be afraid. And along the way, I'm going to try to conquer the ultimate fear, but I'm not going to be able to do that by myself. Are you going to help me? All right. Let's do this. So what is fear? Fear originates in a small, almond-shaped portion of your brain, which can send out signals and hijack the rational thinking you. In the event of a threat, it can redirect resources away from non-critical systems like your digestion and the muscles you use to hold it in until you get to the bathroom. And it can send it towards critical systems that we use for the mode which is typically referred to as fight or... Oh, that was weak. Yeah, so basically it cues you up to be Spartan or to run away like Forrest Gump at a moment's notice. But that's just what fear does. What is it that makes us afraid? Well, research shows that we're born with two fears primarily. The fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. On the count of three, I want you to give me your most terrified sound. What sound do you make when you're afraid? Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so theoretically, that's how you would sound if you were skydiving and listening to death metal at the same time. But along the way, we also acquire other fears besides just falling and loud noises, such as the fear of the dark, fear of sharks, the fear of death, and perhaps the worst of all, the fear that we're going to lose internet connection. And it's these things that terrify us. It's the unknown. It's the things that are beyond our control. But there's one thing that's more terrifying. It ranks above all these, above sharks and spiders and Donald Trump's hair. And you guys are going to help me face this terror in just a minute. But first, let's ask the real question. Why do we scare ourselves? Like, why do sane, rational people spend good money to be afraid? Let me hear you if you've ever been to a haunted house. Anybody? What about a horror movie? What about uh, watch the news? Are we brave or are we just stupid to do these things? Well, these experiences, they shake us to our core on a very real level. They shatter our illusion of control. They make us feel vulnerable and primal even. You know the screams, the jumps you experience when you're sitting in a theater watching a horror movie? However cool you try to play it, at some level you really can't help that. And you know, I think in a way that's liberating. We spend a lot of our life wearing a mask. We have to be socially acceptable, we have to suppress our deep emotions, but when fear grabs you, you can't help but be authentic. You can't pretend that you don't care. So why do we choose to be afraid? Well, I think there are many good reasons I could state, but the most compelling is also, in a way, kind of ironic. And that is, being scared to death, it actually, in a way, makes us feel more alive. So the aftermath of these emotions, this adrenaline rush, these near-death experiences, and watching the news, I mean, they make us acutely aware of ourselves, of our surroundings, and of our desire to just live. Fear forces us to pay attention. It brings us into the here and now with our senses fully engaged and activated. And despite your mortgage or your Facebook notifications or your laundry, when fear gets you, you can't help but be right there in the moment. That's something that home life doesn't do for us sometimes, or work life. Well, unless you have a three-year-old, or you have a startup company, or God help you if you have both at the same time. But let's face our greatest fear. Are you ready to help me? 
Are you ready to help me? You've already been helping me because, as you probably guessed, Americans' number one rated fear was the fear of public speaking. So if you're feeling exceptionally brave, I want to see you on the stage at the next Ignite DFW event because, trust me, it will scare you to death, but it will also make you feel more alive, just as you've helped me feel more alive tonight. So thank you very much.